The three-body problem is probably the best sci-fi novel that's been written in recent times, in my opinion. At the end of this month, we finally get to see the adaptation that Netflix are going to be putting out. I had some really high expectations for this series, and I still do, but the early reviews have just been released, and... 73%. It's not the worst Rotten Tomato score that I've ever seen, um, but it's really some of the critiques that have me feeling a little bit nervous uh, from the reviews that have been left on the Rotten Tomatoes website. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what some of those reviews are saying that's got me feeling a little bit anxious. I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything like that, but for people that have read the book, so I think that most people would agree that the reason this book is so special isn't down to the incredible gadgets that are used, um, it's not down to the big action scenes or, you know, even like the interesting characters, definitely not the interesting characters, especially in the first book. The strength of the book is really down to the ideas and the concepts that are presented and the problems that we as the readers or viewers are faced with. In the three-body problem, the characters are thrown into a seemingly impossible situation where Earth is under threat. How can they possibly get out of this situation? What sacrifice in this situation is morally okay to make? It relies heavily on scientific principles. And I can't tell you what a massive impact this book had on me. Uh, it, it made me kind of view people through the lens of not the individual or a family or a country or even a, a, as a planet or a generation, but as a multi-generational species. You know, that's the kind of scope that we're given. It really zooms out and changes your perspective. It kind of made me trip out a little bit, you know, and, and think about all of our ancestors that have come before us to lead to this moment in history and all of the future generations. It, 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 when a book can kind of make you think in these kind of terms, it's obviously something that's quite special. You know, I mentioned that this book relies heavily on scientific principles and and I, I think that you'll find that in a lot of science fiction books and movies, humanity is very often given an opportunity to fight their way out of a scenario. But in this book, they can't really fight their way out. They have to think their way out. It's absolutely um, a celebration of scientific thinking, um, of being practical and making difficult decisions. And that's one of the reasons that I loved it, but also that means that at some points you just get pages and pages and pages of exposition. I think that's really going to be the challenge that the show is going to have, is in satisfying not just the book lovers, but also a broader audience who enjoy kind of more um, popular science fiction, things like Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, you know, it, it needs to satisfy both of these audiences and it needs to be able to kind of stay true to this celebration of science, but without becoming really tedious, you know? Uh, but let's take a look at the first reviews because that, that's really what I want to talk about. So here's the first review. Um, it's grounded in a solid sci-fi premise, but continually weighed down by flat, often two-dimensional characters and a weak script. The weak script part kind of surprises me, honestly. But the two-dimensional characters isn't that much of a surprise because in the first book, the characters are definitely not the strength of uh, of the book. The, the characters kind of are pretty two-dimensional. They're really there to serve a purpose, to kind of... Um, uh, they're more like a vehicle to take us through this scenario rather than being interesting in their own right. So the the, the character thing, I'm, I'm, I'm not too shocked about. Um, next, 
the expansive spectacle of the three-body problem and the awe it occasionally produces is often hindered by its inherently middling human melodramas and torturous plotting, a tired, heavy, slow and drawn-out resolution that is finally expressed in three long yawns. Three-body problem moves at a brisk, often breakneck speed. Now, this is interesting to me because the last review said that it's tired, heavy, slow. This review says it moves at a breakneck speed. So, you know, you can't always trust these critics, you know? Um, but yeah, it says uh, often breakneck speed to convey a sense of spectacle and awe, but in the process, it sacrifices the thing that made three bodies so singular in the first place, the science. This last review really is the one that's got me the most worried. Uh, like I mentioned, the science isn't just some cool thing about the, the three-body problem. It is the thing. It's all of it. Later on in this review, the critic, uh, I believe her name is uh, pronounced Hoi Tran Bui, says, this sci-fi series has a remarkably incurious attitude about it, talking about the, the science moving from one plot point to the next, as if eager to get to the big set pieces. This is what I'm afraid of. This is what I'm afraid of. She says, those set pieces, to be fair, are pretty spectacular, with one particular disaster showing that Benioff and Weiss haven't lost their touch for creating gutting, jaw-dropping TV. And that's another thing that's got a lot of people a little bit nervous for the show. That's these guys, Benioff and Weiss. Or as they're more infamously known, D&D. &D. And if those names sound familiar, then um, it's probably because they're responsible for this. It also seems like there might be a little bit of review bombing going on from fans who are still bitter about how their favourite series was treated in the latter season, resulting in IMDB scores that look like this. But I think it's important to remember that whilst Benioff and Weiss were responsible for season eight of Game of Thrones, which, you know, I'm, I'm with you, I didn't like it. I especially didn't like the final two episodes. I, I'm, I'm with you. They were also responsible for seasons one to seven, which contained some of the best episodes of television I've ever seen. And the noticeable dip in quality only came when they ran out of source material. And we all know who to blame for that. <laughs> And that's not gonna be a problem with this because this is a completed trilogy. So we're not gonna run into that issue again. You know, I, I, and I, from this video, I don't want you to think that I'm a hater or I'm wishing that this show is gonna do badly because, you know, like a, a typical book snob kind of thing, you know, where, oh, I love the book and it's my special thing and I don't want the masses to have it. I, it's not that I, I want the show to be good. I don't even really care if it's like a really faithful adaptation, like, oh, you've got to hit all the plot points. All I really care about is that I just wanna see a, a really cool, sci-fi but a hard sci-fi you know i just i just want that represented in the show it doesn't need to be exactly the same i know they're going to be changing some of the characters i think from what i've heard it mostly takes place in england which is all you know i think it's okay i i i don't i don't mind if they change a couple of things i just want a really good show and uh, I think that we can get it. And actually, on the w w while we're on the topic of the characters, I mentioned earlier that the characters are kind of one of the weaknesses of the original uh, book. The, the, the characters are just not interesting in any way. I, I didn't find them to be interesting. I think one of the characters, the, the, the main protagonist, is split into five different characters that are known as the Oxford Five. So just brand new or original characters. And again, I'm not one of these um, kind of book snobs that's going to go, oh, that's not exactly how it was. And I, I, I want it to be exactly word for word how it was in the book. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I understand that TV shows, especially TV shows like this, with some of the special effects that I've seen in the trailer, which just look incredible, um, they, they have to have a broad appeal. And the reason that they have to have a broad appeal is because they cost millions and millions of dollars to make. Whereas a book, you know, 
it's it's okay if it doesn't have broad appeal. You know, a, a half a million people can buy the book, and you know, it's a it's a bestseller. But with a TV show, you need a lot more people to watch in order to justify the budget and also justify a second season, which I think we're all hoping for, right? So, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be different to the book. I just hope that they do remain faithful to some of the science, you know, because I want hard sci-fi represented on the screen. I don't just want it to be, you know, lasers and uh, that kind of thing. I I, I, I think it's going to be good. I, 73% is not like a really bad score. Um, it's just not as high as something like Shogun, which came out recently, and that's in the like the high 90s still. Um, and I'm really enjoying that as well. So I know that Benioff and Weiss have a lot riding on this, so they're gonna be <laughs> they're gonna be waiting for those audience reviews to come in. And uh, this could be their complete destruction, or it could be. A redemption arc. We're going to have to see. By the way, uh, I'm currently reading The Dark Forest. Uh, I'm coming up to the end pretty soon. And actually, I'm going to be doing a live reaction to the end of this book. I've, I've heard that it's absolutely epic. So some of you have asked um, that, that I do a live reaction. And so that's going to be coming out. Um, if you'd like to see that live reaction to the end of The Dark Forest, um, then I would suggest that you subscribe, or maybe I've already released it, in which case I'll put it up here. Let me know in the comments section below, do you think that this series is going to live up to expectations? Is it going to be as good as the books? Is that even possible with uh, a story like this? I don't know. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and happy reading.